Brittany Maynard's 30th birthday is five weeks away, but she is not planning to see it. The Oregon woman with terminal brain cancer is reviving a national debate over physician aid in dying. I don't want to die. If anyone wants to hand me like a magical cure and save my life so that I can have children with my husband, you know, I will take them up on it. Brittany Maynard found out this spring that she has the most lethal form of brain cancer and doctors told her she has six months to live. She's decided to forego aggressive treatment to die, as she puts it, with dignity. I think until anyone has walked a mile in my shoes and knows what they're facing and has felt the, like, just bone-splitting headaches that I get sometimes or the seizures or the inability to speak or the moments where I'm looking at my husband's face and I can't think of his name. After her diagnosis, Maynard moved to Oregon. It's one of five states where it is legal for doctors to help terminally ill patients take their own lives. There is a lot of sadness, of course, and also some fear surrounding Brittany's decision to die on her own terms. Earlier today, we talked with Dr. Toby Campbell, the chief of palliative care at the UW Carbone Cancer Center, about the concept of death with dignity. Well, Death with Dignity is a component of a movement across the country which is seeking to um, find ways to allow people to end their lives at a time of their choosing by taking medications with the assistance of a physician. So it's called physician-assisted suicide in which a physician doesn't need to be present, but a person who complies with the criteria can obtain a life-ending prescription that they can take. But there's a stigma to that for a lot of people. If they just can't, you know, that's not the right thing to do. I think there is a stigma. I think all of us would agree that people who are suffering, who have lost control because of serious illness, we can all identify that that must be a terrible situation. And yet the uh, idea that someone would end their own life, I think, is tricky for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Do you think Brittany is a good example uh, to put forward the case for having more choices and being your own advocate in sure. your own decisions? In my mind, Brittany is pointing out that there are worse things than death, that dying what she might think of as poorly, she describes the symptoms that she worries about having. Others die poorly all the time in ICUs, hooked up to every machine imaginable, oftentimes receiving things and kinds of care that they probably wouldn't want if they had clear understanding about what was going on. It is quite possible to have something that's worse than death. Let's say one of your patients comes up to you and said, this isn't going to work. What can I do? What do you say? It happens all the time that people who are seriously ill, most of the patients that I take care of, reach a limit. Um, but I think my job and what patients should expect from us as healthcare providers is high quality communication and an ability to engage in a serious discussion about what's right for them. It is vitally important that we make sure that our treatments and their preferences are closely aligned with one another. And so I must talk with them about what it is that they want, what it is that they're hoping for, looking forward to, trying to accomplish. Because it might be that more treatment is absolutely not the right thing. You know, you could imagine a situation, one of my patients, for example, recently, who uh, wanted to make it to her child's wedding. Vitally important. So what do we do? Of course we delay, we move, we stop treatment early, because that is more important than any individual treatment. Is the fact that Brittany has gotten to this point, though, where she's actually set a date for this, is that a reflection of a failure in the healthcare system, that she feels like she has no other choice? I think Brittany's story is a canary in the mind, so to speak. I think it really probably is a damning critique of what honestly could be said as a broken healthcare system for people who are seriously ill. People who are seriously ill oftentimes are receiving treatment that they aren't interested in. Many people die in the hospital, many people die in ICUs, and what Brittany is saying is, I don't want any part of that. But what she's also saying is, I don't have confidence that the healthcare system is going to be able to take care of me in the way that I want. And that to me is sad because we should be able to do, be do better. How do we fix that? Well, so uh, one of the things I do is called palliative care in which we really uh, center ourselves around patient and family focused care for seriously ill people who are facing um, serious illness or death. One of my research studies is about how to help with shared decision making. We should be telling people about the best case 
outcome we could imagine and the worst case outcome we could imagine and maybe what we think is most likely and we should compare one choice to another so that they can make an informed decision and we can make that discuss have that discussion together we're at least talking about it that's the first there's so much fear associated with even talking about death i think right now it is an opportunity to talk about death and dying in a way that gets around the taboo if we can talk about being born and that being a healthy process and you can do it in a lot of different ways why can't we talk about dying and how we would like to do that? I think we could. Fascinating topic. Dr. Campbell participated in a documentary about end-of-life decisions. It's called Consider the Conversation, using film to inspire person-centered care. You can watch it and get a lot more information about it online at considertheconversation.org.